trust you've had a good week. Amen. Uh, uh, Austin's very happy today. <laughs> and I'll leave it at that. <laughs> I'm glad my salvation isn't based on how the horns do. But anyway, uh, we're going to look at a, a uh, subject this morning that, that can stir things up a bit. And uh, uh, I pray that it's God intent, God's intent to do some stirring. Uh, I think uh, I've probably been guilty of some things in the sense of thinking I know what I know, but don't really know because I just never really looked into it. So we're in Romans 6, but we're not going to start right in Romans 6. But you could turn there because by God's grace we'll get there. Uh, we're going to look at the, uh, the doctrine, uh, church ordinance of baptism this morning. Oh, Brother Doug. Now, now hold on here. Amen. Uh, um, I've witnessed many baptisms. You have, amen. And uh, but what goes through your mind when you're witnessing a baptism? Okay, think with me just for a minute on that. Right? I trust you've been baptized since you've been saved. I want to ask you a few questions. You don't have to answer, but uh, <laughs> as God leads you, answer, amen. Uh, but here, let's just look at a few things here before we get into Romans 6. And I'd ask you to pay attention. Perhaps you, you're comfortable and you're pretty well set in how you think on things regarding baptism. But I, I, want, I want, I pray that uh, you to do some thinking here. Does water baptism play a part in one's salvation? I just think, does water baptism play a part in one's salvation? Is it part of being saved? Okay? I'm going to say no. For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Look with me in Titus chapter 3. <clears throat> I was looking through some of the commentaries. Sometimes I like to do that, sometimes I don't. But uh, just to see how much agreement or disagreement there was on, <laughs> on the subject. It's amazing what's out there. Amen. Amen. And, and, and uh, I don't think I'll have all the answers to some of this, Tom, in glory. But I, I will say this. I do not believe that water baptism is part of one's salvation. Titus chapter 3, in verse 3, says, For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers, lusts, and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another, but after that the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. How? By the washing of regeneration and renewing of, what, the flesh? No, the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Which he shed on us abundantly. How? Through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, Amen. we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. I do not believe that water baptism plays a part in one's salvation. Does water baptism take away any sin? Surely it must do something. Amen. Does it? <laughs> it does do something, amen? You come up a little bit cleaner, right? Amen? <laughs> First Peter chapter 3, if you would please. First Peter chapter 3. Does it take away any sin? Amen. First Peter chapter 3. <clears throat> Reading in verse number... Uh, 20 of First Peter chapter 3 tells us, which sometime were disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was a preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls were saved by water. The like figure, whereunto even baptism doth also now save us. Oh, there it is, Brother Doug. Right there. Yeah. You just contradicted yourself. But you have to read the rest of the rest of the verse here. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh. But look what it says here. But the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I don't believe that water baptism takes away any sin. Brother Doug, this is all very elementary. You would be surprised at what people believe. Amen. Amen. So I challenge you this morning to pay some attention. 
uh, maybe God will use you in giving a little bit of insight into the Word of God regarding water baptism and spiritual baptism at some point we'll get to here. Does, <laughs> this, is a, this is a good one. Does, wa <laughs> does water baptism add you to the church? And the fundamentalists grab their swords and come swinging. Amen. <laughs> Does water baptism add you to the church? You could, you could have a sub-lesson on what is the church. Amen. We will never get done with this lesson. Right? Amen. Does water baptism add you to the church? Pastor just keeping them control over there. <laughs> 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. You would have to define, well, what is the church? Okay. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, reading in verse number 4. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministrations, but the same Lord. There are diversities of operations, but it's the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another the gifts of healings by the same spirit, to another working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh at one and the selfsame spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. Oh, look here now. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body. Whether we be Jews or Greeks, Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit, for the body is not one member, but many. Let me say this. It's the Spirit of God that's doing the baptizing here, and it appears to be doing the adding. But what does the Spirit of God add? Who is, who is he adding to? The body. Now see where you now here's a sub lesson on the church. Amen. Does water baptism add you to the church? I don't believe it does. Brother Doug. Hold on. I believe it I believe spiritual we're speaking about spiritual baptism here in First Corinthians twelve. I believe it adds you to the body of Christ. Amen. What is the church? Oh, I know we're in a local assembly. We all can't meet. The entire Christian community cannot meet at one location this morning. Hence, local. Amen. Okay. Does that make sense? A called out body of believers. Amen. I don't believe water baptism here adds me to the church. I believe the Spirit of God adds me to the body of Christ. Amen. You could say the church as a whole. Amen. Boy, it got quiet on that one, didn't it? Amen. What does water baptism symbolize then? When somebody's getting baptized up here, what is it symbolizing? Anybody? You could, Brother Brantley? The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. Anybody else? Anybody else? Yeah, I see. Uh, I've got a couple thoughts here. Brantley hit the first one here. It's a testimony of repentance and faith in Christ. It identifies a person with Christ. Depicts salvation, dying with Christ, being raised in eternal life. Here's the thing. Um, I want to back up here on this water baptism adding you to the church. I believe Christ places the members in the body. Amen? It, locally too, okay? But I believe the water baptism part is an act of obedience. When somebody requests membership at Trinity Baptist Church, okay, 
Um, the question is probably asked, I'm sure it is asked, are you saved? And have you been baptized? But the, the, the question is asked about being baptized, not because we're going to use your baptism to add you to the local body. The question of have you been baptized is a matter of obedience to the Lord. So when you're asking to become a member of Trinity Baptist Church, but you've never got baptized, scripturally baptized, the question is, well, why not? See? Does that make sense? You don't have to, no, 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 amen, but I'm just trying to, trying to stir you a little bit here. Okay? Because if I, if I move to Dallas and seek membership in a, of like faith and practice in Dallas, do I need to get rebaptized again? No, we usually transfer our membership by letter. Amen? Right? Baptism and instantly think man will make a work out of it if he can. If man can have a part in something, he will. But water baptism, I don't believe, adds you to this church. However, to be a member in good faith and standing with your Heavenly Father, I think it's, a, it's imperative upon God's people to be baptized. So, who should be baptized? Amen? Well, who should be baptized? Who is the candidate for baptism? Anybody? Anybody? Say believer. Amen. You'll find without, we won't look at all this here, but Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 8, Acts chapter 16. We'll look at Acts chapter 16. You remember the Philippian jailer in Acts 16? Acts chapter 16. My desire this morning is not to stir you up by way of controversy, but to stir you up in a sense of, well, what do I, what do I believe about baptism? What do I know about baptism? Amen? I don't have all the answers to it. Here's one, sprinkling, pouring, or immersion. They can't agree on that either. There's pages and pages about, uh, from good godly men that can't agree on the, on the, the method. Uh, I'm not here to stir up the controversy as much as get people to think. I'm thankful for this. It's not dependent on, it's, my salvation is not dependent on, on that. Amen. Amen. But Acts chapter 16, if you look with me here in Acts chapter 16, in verse number 30, uh, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, look at the order of things here. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night, and washed their stripes, and was baptized, he and all his straight way. You'll find here the order they got saved first. The Ethiopian eunuch was, what doth hinder me to be baptized? Uh, are you saved? Amen. As a Christian, if you die without being baptized, is that an issue? <laughs> Come on now. If I were to die today, and I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a Christian, but I never got baptized, is that an issue? Can you think of an example? Thief on the cross. Today thou shalt be with me in paradise, our Lord told him. Today, the malefactor, right? Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Didn't stop and get baptized. But here's, here's, here's the thought here. He was spiritually baptized. Yeah, amen. 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 I was, I say, I was, think with me in the sense of, is God doing the work? Amen. God is doing the work when it comes to spiritual baptism. Mm -hmm. Now, look with me in Romans, and the time flies, but Romans chapter 6. I trust, it, boy, we, we exhausted that lesson, didn't we? Wow, we just wore it out. Nothing else to say. <laughs> probably, probably lying at the door afterwards. <laughs> amen? But, but folks, on water baptism, amen? Do some thinking and some praying. And if somebody asks you about it, you really don't know, well, let's search the scriptures. Amen? Yeah. Jeremiah 33.3, 3, call unto me. I'll show you. Yeah. Ask. 
Ask God. Well, Lord, what about this? I'm not always right. That may come as a new revelation. Amen? But God is. God does have all the answers. Ask him. Romans chapter 6. Here's my question to you again. Look with me in Romans 6 chapter 3. That's Romans 6 chapter, verse 3. Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? Well, now wait a minute. What kind of baptism is going on here in Romans 6? Hold on. What type, what's going on in Romans 6? Baptism, what is it? Water or spiritual? Spiritual. Yes. Not everybody's going to agree with that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to be on the side of spiritual baptism here in Romans 6. Uh, hold that thought and look with me in Galatians chapter 3. Amen. This is an interesting study if you can ask God to discipline the old mind, body, and spirit, and soul and get into it. And just start picking your way through it verse by verse. How is this? What? Galatians chapter 3. Look here in Galatians 3 with me in verse 21. It says, Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteous, it should have been by the law. But the scripture hath concluded all in their sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. For before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up under the faith, which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by ourselves. No, by faith. Amen. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. For ye are all the children of God. How? By faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. If I were to tell you water baptism is what's going on here, that means you've got a part of your salvation that's going on here. There's a works, there's a works process involved here. Man's got his hands on it somewhere here. I don't believe that. Look at this verse again. For as many of you as been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you're all one in Christ Jesus. And if you be Christ in your Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Now, look with me in Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. Romans 6 4. Romans 6 4. Sorry about that. Romans 6 4. Again, I believe this is spiritual baptism, but let's look at some things here in Romans chapter 6, verse 4. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. What do you think is going on here? Buried with him by baptism into death. Let me throw this out for your consideration death of the old man. Amen? Dead to sin. Buried with him by baptism into death. Think with me here, if you would please, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Death of the old man. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. You know these verses. Turn if you'd like. But it says, therefore, in verse 17 of 2 Corinthians 5, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. I'm buried with him by baptism and death. What? Death to self. Death to the old life. Death to sin. Yes. It's pictured. It's pictured by water baptism. Amen? It's pictured by water baptism. And that is not our, our note to stop. So folks, amen, stick with it here. In Ephesians chapter number uh, 4, look with me in Ephesians chapter 4. What's going on here? It's a spiritual baptism. It's a spiritual process. Amen. It's all the working and operation of God. Junction with the word of God and his Holy Spirit. In Ephesians chapter 4, reading in verse number 17, This I say therefore and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk, walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. 
who being past feeling have given themselves over unto the lascivious to work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. That putting off of the old man, if you've been in this class for any length of time at all, is done how? By the operation of Jesus Christ, the spirit of God. Put off the old man. I don't put off the old man myself. Are you kidding me? Because I'm going to leave some things out. Yeah. Right? Yes. This spiritual baptism, I believe, which is being spoken about in Romans chapter 6, and this, this buried with him in baptism unto death, I, I think of the, the death of the old man, death to self, death to sin. You'll find the same thing in the book of Colossians chapter 3. We're almost out of time. Colossians chapter 3. In verse 7, I will not read all this, but Colossians 3. I'm going to read in verse uh, number 1 through 4. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Why is that? For ye are dead. Wait a minute, I'm alive. No, no, no. But ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall we also appear with him in glory. But look with me in 7. In the which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them, but now ye also put off all these. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, and have been put on a new man, which is renewed in knowledge, how? After the image of him that created him. This death, the burial, the picture. Yeah, it's the old man. Amen. Yeah. In 1 Peter chapter 4, in closing, we'll have to come back to this, uh, Lord willing, next week. But 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 1. 1 Peter 4, 1 says, For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Boy, that takes him. That would take a whole other message or two messages, wouldn't it? That he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lusts of men, but to the will of God. Amen. Folks, we're out of time. I trust the lesson has challenged the hearts. I hope it stirred some interest. I used to think I always knew things about some things, and the more you study it, the more you realize sometimes how little I know, how much I still have to learn. So let's stand. We'll be dismissed with a word of prayer. And we'll come back to this. The meat of it is coming up, I guess. And uh, trust that God would bless us with a special insight in Israel. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you. That's all of grace.